Good morning, my name is Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero, J-Man Speaks, and welcome to The Virtual Agent. Uh, what a bet, what, I couldn't think of a better song to end just before we got started, but I'm still standing, right? Uh, we're here, we're trying to figure out uh, how to be virtual agents. We have people joining us from all over the country, which I understand some are essential, some are non-essential. I'm gonna help you no matter what. Uh, today's t-shirt is never quit at halftime, okay? Because I feel we're right around halftime right now. Uh, and, and if you never heard the story, there was a Buffalo Bills store, a Buffalo Bills player who quit at halftime. Nobody remembers his name because he quit at halftime. So we are right around there right now. But we're going to get started fast and furious, okay? This will be 60 minutes of straight content about how you can be a virtual agent. If you have questions, please just utilize the chat. At the end, I will uh, give you guys all the ability to just openly ask questions and I can answer them for you, okay? Be sure to check with your state's updates as far as you know, COVID-19 and what, what you can do or can't do as a real estate agent. It's impossible for me to be updated on all of your states because there, there's people from all over the country. So let me share my screen and we will get started. Okay. Here, go to the PowerPoint and share. Okay, if you can see my screen, please just shake your head. I can see some of your videos. Some of you are not using video. And if you don't know me, I am extremely extroverted with ADHD. So it helps me to see people. That's the only way I can get through all this quarantining that I have to do. Uh, but if you got on early, hopefully you did this. You're gonna take your phone, you're gonna scan that QR code um, and use the keyword virtual agent. Uh, what will happen is our messenger bot will message you back with a handout for today's webinar. Um, the messenger bot is currently deactivated because we had so much traffic in the last seven days. Uh, Facebook thought we were under attack by robots, which doesn't make any sense, if you will. And so they deactivated that temporarily, but you will get your handouts. So any, um, as we go, there's going to be a handout in the beginning, and then I'll give you different keywords for the resources that I provide. All right, the virtual agent, Jeremiah's J-Man Monero, J-Man Seminars. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I've been in the business now going on 15 years. I'm still a real estate practitioner, but I'm also a national speaker. And my niche, what I talk about 99% of the time is video, social media, and technology. So I'm not somebody who Googled this stuff and said, hey, this will be good for you to try for your business. I'm using it right now. And I'm in New York State where, where we are deemed essential, but we are restricted from doing so many things. And I'm going to teach you how you can uh, do business today how you can do business in the future when that does change, and then how you can do business when the new normal uh, begins, whenever that might be. Uh, but I love starting out with this quote, this quote, so, an entrepreneur, or let's call us realtors, right, is someone who jumps off a cliff and builds a plane on the way down. I feel like that's what we're doing right now. We're trying to figure out, and you know, we've never been in this situation before where they said, hey, you can't even see your clients. People are, you know, like this, trying to figure out how to build a plane on the way down. Well, you're here. I'm going to teach you how to build it. Uh, and I want you to be happy today and always. So if I unmute, I don't want you to unmute yourself at all, but if, if somebody does become unmuted, please just keep looking down in your lower left hand. If you don't see it in or, uh, a red microphone with a slash through it, that means you're unmuted. And if you have a barking dog or a baby crying or sirens in the background or anything like that, it drives my ADHD crazy and I won't be able to continue. Okay. So please just be, uh, be courteous to others and mute yourself along the way. Okay, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. So I would encourage you, use the, the, the hashtag virtual agent 2020. Uh, I would do a post right now. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, taking this extra time to be better, do better, to better serve my clients. I'm on a webinar right now about how to be a virtual agent and how to help my clients in 2020 with COVID-19. Right, I, I think it's important more than ever to stay in touch with your clients, with your database, to stay top of mind, and don't just go on vacation. Right, don't just sit home in your pajamas and and sleep in and and do you know a webinar every once in a while. Work on your business. Do all the things that you wanted to do when you thought you didn't have the time. Right now is the time. You could also, uh, as a backup, if that QR QR code doesn't work for you, you can send a message to the page uh, using the keyword virtual agent. See, there's four arrows. Okay, our Facebook page is uh, facebook.com slash jmanspeaks, and I would follow it if I was a wise agent who wanted to stay in touch with technology 
and uh, video related matters because everything I do that's on there, it's for free, it's to your benefit. So why wouldn't you? All right, what can we do virtually? You could put this in the chat, you know, maybe in your state, say, hey, my state, this is what we can do. Uh, you know, look what I can do. Uh, but we can do just about everything related to real estate virtually. Okay, we have showings, we have open houses, virtual open houses, right? Not in person. Uh, presentations, we have communications, and then we also have uh, final walkthroughs, right? For those of us who already had pending business before this hit, we still have to get those through to closings, to, to closing, or uh, I know other states have different, different names for it, but when your client signs the paperwork, you know, there's a final walkthrough that's included in most states before they do that. So I'm gonna help you. So let's start with showings, okay? With showings, uh, again, depending on your state and what the rules are, whether you're deemed essential or non-essential. Uh, I'm in New York State, we are essential, but they recommend that we do not see our clients in any way, shape, or form. Okay, they don't, they don't think there's any way that's re legally required for us to see our clients in person. I think that's the, the verbiage that they use. But if you're in New York State, make sure you go to nysarcovidupdates.com every single day because it's updated every day um, as things progress and as the, more things are clarified. Uh, every state that I've, I've encountered does have an FAQ or somewhere posted on the state or the local real estate board website. So please check in with that before you go to social media, before you go to your, your Facebook groups and go, oh, this is unbelievable. I can't believe. Check, make sure you know what you're doing. Okay. So first thing I would do is uh, we use showing time in our market and, and across the state and across the country. Uh, they also acquired centralized showing. So showing time is the only option. They are actually now scheduling virtual showings. So in the showing remarks, you would say, you know, use showing time like you would if it's online or um, if, if you have a phone number for them, but use showing time, they can schedule it. They would then say, I want to schedule a virtual showing, right? Typically with an in-person showing, what would happen? The seller would receive a notification saying, hey, tomorrow, in this example, uh, tomorrow at 11.15 a.m., Allison Townsend wants to show your property. The seller then says, okay, I'm available at that time, just like they would for a normal showing, except it's virtual. Okay. So that's scheduled ahead of time. You are then notified as the agent, the buyer's agent is also notified, and then he notifies the buyers. Okay, we have a confirmed virtual showing for tomorrow at 11.15. You stay home. You, if you're the listing agent, stay home, and the seller does the walkthrough. I wanna clarify that, okay? You, the listing agent, stay home. Seller is at the listing. Buyer's agent is at their home, and buyers are at their current home, right? Because they're gonna buy, hopefully, your listing and that'll be their new home. Everybody's at their respective homes. And this can work whether the property the property's vacant and the seller's still local, they can go there. Uh, if the seller lives there, it's even better, you know, because in our state, they are allowing virtual showings, but then you have, cross, in my opinion, cross-contamination where if the seller's home, they leave, that buyer's agent comes and does a virtual showing. Eh, who knows where each party has been and how well you can sanitize or just feel you'll want to be safe. First and foremost, be safe. So programs and apps that you can use. The first one I'm going to recommend is Zoom. You're on Zoom right now. Okay, there was uh, a higher number. Let me see how many people we have on. We have 54 people that are on currently. We had over 100 people registered. And I know after every webinar, there's some people that just couldn't get on. They couldn't figure it out. They tried to click the link. They asked me what the password is. They need help. Okay, I guess Zoom isn't the most user-friendly but I think it's what most people are using now. I think your sellers will, will be uh, familiar with it. If not, you know, it's up to you to kind of become a little bit more proficient and, and help them through it. The second is Google Hangouts, okay? Google Hangouts, again, it's pretty simple and it's free. They have to have a Gmail account. We're gonna go over that in a second. Google Meet is the upgraded version of Google Hangouts. At some point, uh, Google Hangouts will be phased out. Google Meet or Google Meeting, depending on, on who you hear talking about it. Uh, we'll replace it. And then the last one is Facebook Messenger. And you might say, you know, how would I use Facebook Messenger? It's the easiest one, right? You don't realize anybody that you're communicating in with Facebook Messenger, all you have to do is click the camera button at the top and it will automatically video call them. There's no other setup. There's no link to provide. There's none of that. It makes it simple. Okay. So Zoom, like I said, there's a little bit of a learning curve. So if you send the keyword Zoom help, 
okay? That's gonna get you a, a, a one sheet to help you with Zoom. Uh, I would recommend that you upgrade from, you know, the, the basic account allows you to do 40 minutes. And when you're doing walkthroughs and you're doing showings, uh, I, I had a virtual final walkthrough uh, two nights ago, it took, took an hour, right? So I wanna make sure that I can go longer than 40 minutes and it gives you the ability to record those webinars. Okay, check with your local laws. Uh, where I'm from, it's a one party consent state, meaning if you're on a webinar with me, I can send it to the recording, that's okay. If you're a two party consent state, that means both parties have to agree to the recording. And that's where I might start out and say, you know, ladies and gentlemen who are on the call today, I want you to agree, if we can all agree in the chat to say, I agree to this being recorded, right? And just have them type it out in the chat because all that can be part of the recording as well but it's only $14.99 a month. Uh, and I think it's well worth it. I mean, if you think about what you spend $14.99 a month on, uh, it's well worth it. You have the recording and you're gonna be using this even when we get back to the new normal. I think so many of you would have been hesitant um, and, and, and would have really fought against doing this had we not been in the current situation. But I think as, as agents see how easy it is, as clients, as consumers see how easy it is, we're gonna be doing more and more of this virtual you know, communication, especially if you're in an area where travel times might be excessive, right? If, I, if it's going to take me an hour to walk, you know, to, to walk, an hour to drive somewhere, meet with somebody, and then an hour to get back to my office, it might make sense to have a virtual meeting, okay, moving forward. This is my four-year-old. Uh, we actually set up a, a Zoom for them for his pre-K four class. You know, he can hear Sarai. Sarai, can you hear me? Can you hear us? Sarai, can you hear me? Yeah, Mama, can you help? Sarai, can you hear me? Sarai, can you hear me? Sarai, can you hear me? So I just wanted to show that to say, look at it, it's so easy. A four-year-old could do it. All right, so there's no reason you should be hesitant. Uh, what I would say is, you know, I'm sure most of you have been participating in like virtual happy hours or get togethers or meeting with your family, like really dive into it, like get some coworkers from your office and you guys can all just have a party, but each one of you tests all of the features of Zoom, right? Okay, let me try to share my screen in case I have to go over paperwork. Let me try to have something in the chat. Uh, let me share a file in the chat. Let me uh, figure out how to do a Q and A. So you can figure out all these features before you meet with your clients. The time to practice is not live with your clients, okay? You don't wanna be going on with them and going, you know, this uh, the final walkthrough I had a couple days ago, not very tech savvy seller. That's a tongue twister, not very tech savvy seller. And he was using his iPad. And had I not known what his functionality would be like on an iPad, I wouldn't have been able to help him because he didn't know how to turn his screen from facing him to facing away, which we would need for him to do the final walkthrough unless he's going like this and then he can't see you know, where, where things are going. So become familiar with it on your desktop, on your laptop, on your mobile device, and on your, your tablet because it's all a different experience. So Google Hangouts, it is free to a good home, right? If you have Google, you have a Gmail account, you have Google Hangouts. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just need somebody's email address to call them. Uh, you also have in there, uh, you know, you can text message. There's a whole bunch of other, of other features, uh, but this can also be added to, added to your calendar as an appointment. We're going to get to that in a second. Okay, the upgraded version is Google Meet. You may have not heard of it. Uh, the keyword is Meet, M-E-E-T, or Meetup, either one. Uh, that'll get you a one sheet on how to get started with Google Meet uh, and tips and tricks to help you succeed. Uh, the big difference between Hangouts and Meet, Hangouts originally was just very much like it sounds, an informal hangout, right? I'm gonna hang out with my buddies, I'm gonna do a Google Hangout. This is a lot more formal, it's more business-like. It does give you the phone numbers and everything for people to dial in in the case that they don't have video. Um, it is part of the Google Suite package when you upgrade for $12 a month. And so, again, well worth it. I'm gonna tell you that I'm an early adapter, I'm big into technology, I spend the money when I need to. And I've wasted my money on stuff. And I, if, that, if it's a waste, I would tell you. So $12 a month is worth it because you not only do you get the Google Meet, but you also get an unlimited Google Drive, right? Remember when I told you you could record your Zooms? Well, you can download those videos and then upload it to Google Drive. Now you have the videos 
forever and it's unlimited so you can fill it up or you can't fill it up and then they also give you a branded gmail account meaning my my email is jman at jmanseminars.com that's my gmail right it's not jman i have another one that's jmanseminars at gmail but you know it's not a forwarding one it is a branded gmail account that's part of the google suite all right and then facebook messenger like i said this is free and easy um we're going to do a quick demonstration right after this but all you have to do is have a group on Facebook. So the group would be, if I was doing a virtual showing, would be seller, me, buyer's agent, and buyer, right? I add the group. Uh, you can create a group and then somebody outside the group, like if you had the buyer's agent, the buyer's agent could then add their client uh, if they feel weird about giving you their client's information. Needs to mute their device, please. Thank you. All right, and then here's what the calendar looks like. So my pretend virtual showings, I get the, I get it from, from showing time, showing time confirms it. I would then add it to my calendar on Google calendar. Uh, you want to make sure to go into your zoom account in your zoom account. There's an integration right under your profile where your settings are to add zoom to it. So now you're integrating your Google calendar with zoom. So when I make the appointment, you can see on the left hand side here, it says make it a zoom meeting or make it a hangouts. It makes it super easy where I just add it to the calendar. I would then add my guests on the right hand side. Right. I add my guests. Right. 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 Hold on a second. I got to mute everybody now. Um, there we go. All right. So if I, yeah, I would add all my guests. I would add the seller as a guest, right? Have their email. I would add the buyer's agent as a guest, have their email, and I would get the email from the buyer's agent as well to add the buyer to it uh, because the buyer agent wouldn't be able to add them to my calendar. Uh, he could, I guess, forward the calendar invite to them if they were weird about it. But like, look at folks, let's get over it. Sharing your client's email address does not mean that the other agent's going to steal your client. Okay. Have an exclusive right to represent. None of that's going to matter. All right. So let's do it. We're going to take a moment. I want you to take your phones out. Okay. This is a phone. I then want you to pick one of the options that I gave you, either Zoom, you're on Zoom, you can't do that. But I would say pick Facebook Messenger. Okay, now pick somebody that wouldn't care if you just called them out of the blue. So it could be a friend, a family member, a coworker, or just prank call somebody for all I care. Uh, I just want you to try it. Okay, find them. And then when you see the, when you're, on that person, like you're gonna send them a message, there should be a camera right above it. I'm gonna to try to share my screen. See if this works. Meetings. Are you trying it? I can see your guys' videos, so I can know whether you're not doing it. Okay. I'm going to mute myself over here for a second. Amy, I see your hand. Just give me a second. Okay. Start. Okay. You can see my screen now. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Facebook, social media, call the bot nerds. And I didn't plan this ahead of time. Hey, uh, no. Don't worry, you're on a webinar with like 100 people. I just wanted to demonstrate how Messenger works. Okay. Have a great day. <laughs> yeah, they're going to kill me later. But let me get, stop sharing. Stop share, leave the meeting. Boom. All right, so I demonstrated that for you guys. Did everybody see that okay? Yes? Okay, we have a question. Let's 
So the, there's another quick, yeah, Patty Lopez, um, New York State is limited essential. I guess that's what they would call that. But uh, as you could see, I didn't plan that ahead of time. I just picked two people I knew I had a group with. I hit the call button. It called them. She, she's going to kill me because I, she probably wasn't camera ready to be on a webinar with however many people we have on. But that's okay. All right, you see how easy that was. Um, it would make sense to, for you yourself to familiarize yourself because if I was doing a virtual open house, if that was okay in my market, uh, when we get to that, I would have my, my laptop here and I would have my device ready to do the walkthrough of the property. Does that make sense? Right, I have my device, just like a virtual open. We're gonna get to that in just one second. All right, so virtual showings in person, if your state allows it. Um, again, our, our state has said, virtual showings with nobody else there. If it's a vacant property, perhaps that's okay. Um, but again, check with your state on what the local laws are. That's what I'm gonna say. Stay home, wait, if that's what your state requires. So virtual showings in person. What I would recommend is Google Duo. Um, I'm doing, uh, you know, with Google Duo, you can, it used to be one to one person. Now it's one to many. So you can have up to 12 people on a Google Duo call. It's free. Um, and they do not have to have a Gmail account, right? With Google Hangouts and with Google Meet, they have to have a Gmail account. So sometimes iPhone, Apple people are like, ew, I don't want to have a Gmail account. Uh, with this, it's cross-platform, but it's only mobile device to mobile device. Your other option is to have a virtual tour or a virtual, um, yeah, virtual tour or a video of the property that you took ahead of time that's posted, either hosted online, on your Google Drive, on YouTube, wherever, and you have that. I know many uh, MLSs are changing it to have a virtual tour um, for virtual showings, a separate link. Uh, most of your MLSs will have a branded and an unbranded version. So just to be sure that it syndicates across to all the websites that you want it to, I would say keep it unbranded, right? You could say your name, but you don't have to say your company name or anything like that if you're gonna do that, that walk through the property. I'm going to show you one second, new share. I'm going to show you my Chrome. Okay. Coming back over here. Everybody see this. Okay. Are you looking at my Chrome right now? You see, like it says the fun house house. Somebody just go like this. Peggy, I can see you. So, okay. Like Peggy and Joe are the only two I can really see. So you guys got to be more interactive just because I had my eye on you. Okay. Uh, so the fun house house, this is just the house that I picked from Matterport.com where these virtual walkthroughs are hosted. Um, and it's not a video in any way. What it is is actually a high resolution um, photo that they took multiple times and it's all stitched together to create an immersive walkthrough experience. Uh, the best example I give to folks is like, a, like a, a Google Street View. When you're walking down the street and turn, you can look right, look left, it's the same thing. So let's, let's go to the fun house. Okay, this is actually a house that's on the market. What you can see, I can walk through, I can go, what in the heck is going on with these folks? I believe they did not leave a very fun decade. And come back over here. What's this room over here? Here's the kitchen. Okay, I can go back over here. I can go on different floors. Let me go down a floor. Whoop. Looks like I'm in somewhere where the furnace is. I can come back over here and look at the floor plan. Okay, so it, it can give you dimensions. It can give you room dimensions. It is so much more than just a video of the property. So that's why I, I feel like it's a, it's a much more immersive experience, it's better. And then if you see here where it says view and VR, if I click that, they have Google Cardboard, which you can get relatively cheap. And then you have Samsung Gear VR. What, what you would do is take your phone, you put it in VR mode, put your phone on your face like this, and then the person can do a, virt a virtual walk through the property. <laughs> Go back to the presentation over here. New share. Back to the PowerPoint. 
All right, so Matterport. Again, if you don't have somebody in your area, matterport.com. Uh, the camera itself is pretty expensive. I think they got it down to around $3,000. So I don't have one just for that reason because I can't have nice things. If I have it, I would break it. I just pay somebody to do those, those tours for me. All right, final walkthroughs. Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. Like I had a, a final walkthrough, like I said, a couple nights ago. The same way I would did a virtual showing is the same way that I would do a final walkthrough, okay? Uh, the seller is at the property, I am at my house, buyer's agent is at their house, and buyer is at, is at their old house. Um, and actually with this one, I was the buyer's agent representing the buyer. The listing agent didn't really show up, but he didn't really need to be there unless he wanted to. And take a negative and make it a positive, right? It's all, it's not, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, rather than say to the buyers, oh man, I'm so sorry, we have to do a virtual final walkthrough. Um, you know, it's usually we go, no, I go, it's great, we're gonna do a virtual final walkthrough. Like, what does that mean? I send them a video ahead of time, and when we get to Bomb Bomb, I'll show you. I send them a video of what to expect, of how it's gonna work, and then we coordinate it with the seller, we schedule it just like we would a normal final walkthrough, and then the seller did it. Right? This seller told my clients more about the property than I ever would have or could have in a final walkthrough. Right? He's going through and going, you see this switch over here? Yeah, this switch oh, turns on that light. You see this chemicals over here for the pool? Make sure you do this. All the things that they need to know to be the next homeowner, you know, make it a positive. Say, this is great. And here's, that's not all, folks. What I did, you know, remember how it, you can record it? It's recorded. I then downloaded it and then I put it in my Google Drive and shared the link with my client. So now if my client ever wants to go back and reference that video as far as what they need to do to winterize the pool, what they need to do to get the hot tub ready for springtime, what they need to do, what they need to do, it's there, right? Talk about just now I'm providing even more service than I would have at a final walkthrough. And if there's any issues, I also have a recording of it, right? If the seller's walking through and there's a big hole where that TV used to be, or something leaked or something like that, we got it, we got it on video. And if we need to ask, ask for a credit, we have visual documentation of what's happening. All right, so again, I just wanna reiterate, you stay home in this example, listing agent. Seller's at the listing, buyer's agent is there as at their home and buyer, buyers at their current home. Now, virtual open houses virtual open houses okay which means you're not there again stay home if that's what your state requires uh, you can do virtual open houses depending on your state and the rules uh, where you are at the house nobody else is okay if it's a vacant property the seller doesn't live there the house has been sterilized maybe that might be an option for you but in any any of these situations if you can stay home I would prefer you stay home, stay safe, keep your clients safe. Okay, so virtual opens. Uh, first thing I would do is schedule it, right? Uh, like you would a normal open house, you would schedule it in the MLS. I would be careful. I know many MLSs now have a virtual open house section. The challenge that can happen, and you need to check this, this is very important that you check this before there's a riot in your local market. When you do that virtual open house, be sure that when it syndicates to the third party websites like HomeSnap or MLS or any of your other like third party apps, that that virtual open house comes through as an open house so that the consumer doesn't see it on some site and go, oh, a public open house on this date at that time. Okay, so I would test it. I would wait an hour for the syndication to happen. Check all the, the big sites. Make sure that that doesn't happen. If it does, you have to remove it. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to, you know, fail on the side of, of caution here because I don't want people showing up at a virtual open where your seller's supposed to be there by themselves. Uh, what you could do is put it in the public remarks, depending on what your MLS rules are, just say, hey, virtual open house on this date. If you send postcards to the neighborhood, typically for your open houses, send them and just say, we're doing a virtual open house, it means nobody, I would put in caps, no one at the house go online to this link to watch the virtual open okay and now you're going to do this just like you would okay well let me tell you this first 
Uh, you schedule an open house event on your Facebook, on your social media, right? You would then also create a watch party once you start the video, because watch parties are a great way to, to enhance viewership. And then those are the programs. So let me give you, give you what to do during the virtual open. I would say if it's scheduled on Saturday or Sunday, and I don't think the days matter anymore because every day is just another day. But if you schedule for Sunday at one o'clock, I would say at 105, we're gonna be doing the first virtual walkthrough of the property. This is where it's important that you know you do run through with the seller because you don't want them to be trying to do this <laughs> live when you're out I have it already scheduled. Uh, Joe, you could just blank your video out. You don't have to put a post-it over it. But uh, you know, it's, they do the walkthrough at 105. They would then come back and then they would mute their video, mute their audio, and then you sit there just like you would for an open house. Somebody comes in virtually. It's just like they walked in through the front door. You then give them another walkthrough. Mrs. Seller, we have a, a, you know, another potential person who wants to see the house. Then the seller goes, okay, here's our walkthrough. And walks through the house. Make sense? I like it much better because it's live. People, it's more interactive. People feel like they're actually walking through the house. They can guide you through, tell you to turn left, turn right, up, down. Let me see that corner. Let me see the backyard. And it's, it's more directed where, you know, if it's a video that you've recorded, it goes in the order that you want it to go and it sees what you want it to see. So here's some programs that we would use for that. Uh, BeLive.tv. Uh, if you, any of you follow me on social media, BeLive.tv is what I use for 90% of my interview style videos where I have multiple people on the screen. Uh, you can have up to four people on the screen. So if I was doing a virtual open, it could be me, it could be my seller, uh, you could have a loan officer on there as well if you wanted to, or anybody else. Um, and that's how we do the walkthroughs. Uh, there's an additional branding. You can bring comments on the screen. I'll show you in a second. Second one is Restream.io. Okay, Restream, if you have any kind of YouTube presence or you wanted to get on YouTube with your video, it can actually multi-stream in two locations, meaning I can go live on my Facebook account as well as my YouTube account at the same time. Just another option. And then the third one is StreamYard.com. Uh, StreamYard is similar to BeLive.tv. It will syndicate to other places, but it's a separate program that pushes video to Facebook. When you schedule those showings, or schedule the showings, when you schedule that open house ahead of time, this is what it would look like. What you're actually doing is scheduling a live video to begin at a certain time. So on your page, it would say, you know, Peggy look, is going to go live on Sunday at one o'clock. If I click, see where it says interested in the lower right hand side, that would normally say get reminder. So if I click that, it then says interested. It's gonna remind me the day of, it's gonna remind me I think an hour before, 30 minutes, 20, 10, five, two, one, so I don't miss it. It's, it's a much better feature than just going live and hoping people will tune in. All right, we're gonna take another quick field trip. I'm gonna go back to the Chrome. Dun, 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 dun. Feel free to type any questions you have in the chat. Okay, we're going back to Chrome. The website's gonna be belive.tv. It's actually free, as long as you're not gonna do more than two 30 minute broadcasts per week. Okay, so if I come in here and I go start broadcast. Can everybody see my screen okay? Let's go like this, okay. So I'm gonna come in here, first thing I would do is set my destination. Destination means where do you wanna push that video, right? Go like this, set destination, Facebook. If I wanna schedule it, I'm gonna go schedule. I then say today's the 10th, I'm gonna do next Friday, at 10.40 a.m. Somebody remind me to delete this when I'm done. Okay, and then you, you're gonna put where you wanna go live. So it's not only your personal profile, you could pick one of your pages that you're an admin on. I have multiple pages, obviously. And then uh, any groups that you're a part of as well. So I'm just gonna pick my public profile page you can add an image to it. So whatever image you would use for your open house, like 
you know, open, open Sunday and you had a, a really nice picture of the exterior. Then you had four bedrooms, two baths, 2000 square foot colonial in the heart of lovely neighborhood. Okay. That image you can upload on there because that's the image that'll show when it says, you know, Jeremiah's plans to go live on Sunday. You then post your description here. That's, I would probably just copy and paste what my public remarks might say, right? From your listing, put that in there and then you hit save. I have now scheduled that for next Friday. I got to remember to take that down. But you can come in here, the text on the screen, I can change. Okay, you have a little scroller you can add at the bottom. Please comment with answers. Virtual agent is the best. I could bring that down or, or type anything else. I could do this all live during the stream. Okay, I could change my appearance of the overlay. Like I have an overlay here. I can make a beautiful Easter one. Look at this, this is nice. Okay, lovely Easter one. I can change the logo in the upper right hand corner where it says J-Man's Ed Talks. I could change that to Antonio TV is my son's logo, he's nine. He does live streams. Okay, see how that, so that could be your branding, it could be your company name, it could be whatever you want it to be. It could be information about the house that's framed around there. If you have a graphic design background, it's pretty easy to just create a a frame with a transparent um, middle. Okay, easy enough. I know I'm doing this fast. I, I will post this video again, probably on my YouTube channel on my page so that you can reference back and see everything that I'm doing in slower motion when I'm giving a lot of stuff at once. Okay, going back. All right, field trip complete. Uh, but you can also do Matterport for your open houses, just like you did for the, the virtual showing. So you just say, hey, it's gonna be virtually open on, on Sunday at one o'clock. We'll send you the link, register for the open house. So at least you can kind of keep track, right? Keep track of it. Or if you have an event that you're creating, you have people who have, you know, uh, RSVP that they're gonna go to the event. Broker opens. Now I know in my market, many markets, the way we get people to our brokers open is delicious food, right? Uh, when I would take listings, I would say to the seller, hey, I'm gonna bribe people to come see the house with yummy hot food. We, and our go-to is like baked tea, chicken parm, we'll have salad, we'll have desserts. That gets the agents there, but they see the house, right? I tell the seller that. We'll bribe them to come here and see the house, and then they become familiar with it, and maybe they have a buyer today or maybe they don't, maybe they might have one in the future. My job is to get in there and familiarize them with the property. So when it comes to doing it virtually, it would be very similar. I would schedule it. I'd probably use Zoom because then you can have people register just like you registered for this webinar. You can have them register. Now you know who was there, who showed up. And then you could say, okay, everybody that shows up for the brokers open, we're going to raffle everybody's name to receive a free gift card. Right? It could be a gift card to a local restaurant that you're trying to support because we should all be supporting local businesses uh, that are doing takeout or doing something just, just to stay open. Right? Get that information from them and then also get the feedback. Here's an example. And who takes a stand now um, is, you know, I hate to say it, but I think that. Okay, that's just another, we had 84 people on that Zoom. Online presentations. Like you're seeing now. There's a number of ways to present online. You could present your listing presentations, buyer presentations. If you've ever done a home buying seminar, think about, think about the opportunity, right? If you've ever done a home buying seminar, you had to rent a space, you had to buy coffee, buy you know, food for them, all of that. You have to print paper. That's all gone. You don't have to do that. You can do it online virtually, right? You can do a Zoom just like this, have people register, and then do your presentation. Uh, what you're seeing here, is a PowerPoint that I created in Haiku Deck. Let me explain, okay? You may all be familiar with PowerPoint. It's been around for a long time. If you still have, use my book that I have here. If you still have one of these deals where you're, you flip through like a flip book, I would say make sure you convert it to PowerPoint. Uh, my favorite is actually Prezi. 99% of my presentations are done with it. It's like a visual, more, more visual zoomable canvas, right? It's like a storyboard that you can tell the story. Uh, but this presentation was made with Haiku Deck. Uh, Haiku Deck is a little bit different because it doesn't allow you to do death by PowerPoint, meaning I can't put a ton of words on the screen. If you've noticed as I go through this presentation, there's an image 
and then there's a few words. Unless it's a list like this, then I have the list, a few words each. Um, it doesn't allow you to do a whole bunch of you know, wordsmithing on the screen. Uh, in this example, I just type, what's the main subject of the slide? And it has royalty-free images for me to use. Every single image you see here, right? These are all royalty-free images that came from Haiku Deck. Okay, this one was presentation. It's, it's a Star Wars guy, and it looks like he's painting, but I liked it anyways, and that's what I used. It then allows you the opportunity to download the Haiku Deck into PowerPoint and edit it further, which is what I did. And then the fourth one is Keynote. Keynote is uh, Apple's version of PowerPoint. Okay, we're, we're not gonna do another field trip. What I'm gonna show you here is a video. Um, Prezi's newest version is called Prezi Video. So check this out. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero, J-Man Speaks. I'm doing a quick demonstration of the new Prezi Video app. That's right, you've heard of Prezi. You've heard of Prezi Next, which was the next generation. And now we have Prezi Video, which integrates all the wonderful features of Prezi, the storyboard format that we love so much, with video that we love so much. So it's like video and Prezi had a baby. And Prezi Video is the product of that. So check this out. Uh, I have different templates that I can use, but I'm just going to do this. I'm going to show you a quick PowerPoint presentation on CRMs and CRMs to choose. Uh, we've been working with one called Wise Agent. So just show you this quickly. Boom. I bring the presentation in to my video. Welcome, everybody. That's an image that I chose. It's not part of the uh, PowerPoint, but I'm going to go swipe. It's going to go again. Do you even need a CRM to manage a real estate business? You know, only if you want to stay in business. Okay. I'm not going to show you the rest because who wants to see that whole thing? I just wanted to show you, like, see how it's video and then the presentation is actually overlaid. I would. I, I you import it into Prezi Video and then whatever it is. Now imagine if you're presenting virtually to a seller. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm here to tell you about you know listing your home. We think about the Monero team. We are architects of the American dream. Swipe right and just a lot more dynamic, way more techy than hello class. Today we're going to be doing a PowerPoint. Click and then it's like clicking through a PowerPoint. Do something new, do something a little bit you know outside the box. Uh, electronic signatures. So. Many of you have been using this for years. I've been using uh, Transaction Desk going on 12 years now, uh, since 2008, uh, which is Instant Authentic Sign. Uh, but you just wanna be sure that it's something real estate specific, right? And here are some examples. You have Instant, you have Authentic Sign, you, um, you have Zip Forms Plus, you have Dot Loop, you have DocuSign. You know, you could sign, like right now, I could, I have many programs that are, my hand disappears here. I have many programs that are PDF manipulators, meaning I could import a PDF and somebody could sign it on my phone. That is not a legal signature. Okay, you wanna be sure that you're using one of these options. And then for transaction management, all of it goes into, into these programs, right? 100% of every transaction that I do is imported into transaction desk. Meaning, you know, in our state, we write our own, con meaning we don't write our own contracts, but we have contracts where we fill in the blank, right? Once we get into contract, meaning there's an accepted offer, that goes up into transaction desk. We have to have attorney approvals in our state, the ups, you know, upstate part of our state. That goes in. Inspection gets done, that goes in. Inspection removal, that goes in. Every part of the transaction is in there. Okay, so 10 years from now, somebody says, hey Jay, um, we're getting sued for this property at 155 Timuron Trail. Boom, I can pull it up and I can pull all the information about it and send it to somebody in five minutes or less from my mobile device. Okay, because when you're talking about servicing your clients in the new millennium, you should never, ever, 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 ever say when I get back to the office. Okay, you don't have to. Well, many of us can't go to the office, <laughs> but if you did, and it was new, and it was you know, the new normal, just replace when I go back to the office with when you find a new real estate agent. Okay, because today's consumer, they they won't understand why you need to go back to the office to do anything. You're a virtual agent. All right, client communications. More important than ever to stay top of mind and communicate with your clients, right? You're, you're feeling stressed. You're feeling anxious. They are too. And even if your update is like, look, I don't really have an update this week. I have buyers that I'm working with every week. The update is, yep, can't show you anything in person. Let you know next week. Okay. They're, they're, they're excited to start looking, but they're not excited to, to break the law or break the rules because we would never do that. 
Um, and then just client communications for people who are in the pipeline, who are thinking about buying or selling. It's important as things progress in your state, you have a message that goes out to them. And it, for me, it wouldn't be an email message. Everything I do is video, right? Because I can, I can, the best way for me to communicate is face to face and video is being face to face when I can't be. Like if you turn off your video, it wouldn't be the same just listening to my, my voice as it would be as you can see what I'm saying and I'm pointing, I'm doing different things. And I can, you can understand better my excitement about what we might be talking about. Whereas a text message and an email, just not the same. All right. And then you also have just your past clients, keeping, keeping in touch with them. Uh, I know we're, we're going to be releasing one soon about uh, mortgages, right? There's a lot, of, a lot of different things out there just saying, oh, don't worry. Don't worry about paying your mortgage. Um, it's going to get forgiven or, you know, be the truth right? You're the real estate expert. Get in touch with your clients. Um, I was actually on a webinar where a guy said, oh, if you're an investor and you have multiple properties and your clients don't pay the rent and don't pay the mortgage, it'll be fine. And I'm, I almost fell out of my chair. Okay. So we need to be the truth. We need to communicate effectively. We need to tell everybody, update them as we have the updates from a reliable source. The internet or websites that are not validated are not reliable sources. Neither are other real estate agents, unless they can cite the source and cite the, uh, the website where it came from, and that's like your state board or your local real estate board. All right, so bomb bomb is my number one way to communicate with video. Um, as you can see here, this is just a screenshot of an email that was sent to somebody. It's embedded in the email. That's the big difference. Okay, the conversion rate is much higher but they feel like we haven't seen anybody in a while, but we're seeing you virtually, right? Me looking at you, I feel like, oh man, I see people again. It's not, <laughs> I'm not seeing you in person, but it's pretty close. And then if you don't have a CRM or a client relationship manager, uh, the one that we recommend is uh, Wise Agent because it integrates back with BombBomb, right? So the keyword for BombBomb is BombBomb, one word. Not boom, boom, okay, because some people, so I say bomb, bomb 10 times, and I'll get a, a keyword saying boom, boom, and I'll be like, that's not it. Uh, but what you'll get for that is links to all of my templates, because I'm going to show you in a second a couple of my templates of how I communicate with my clients, because they get something as soon as they go in, you know, before they're in a contract, but once they go in a contract, they'll get a pending process video email. Then they'll get an inspection, how do inspections work, right, for our state, uh, inspectors are, are deemed essential, but the buyer's not allowed to be at that inspection. So I'm gonna change that video so that they, they understand how that works, but they're still gonna get the report. So explaining all the different parts of the process so that they understand what is going on. Uh, let me, so like I said, CRM is the Client Relationship Manager with Wise Agent. Um, if I do a video on BombBomb, I could actually take the embed code and it will embed right into Wise Agent just like anything else. Let me just show you rather than tell you. I'm gonna go back to Chrome. Okay, so here's Bomb Bomb. <clears throat> go to my dashboard. Just so you know that I am actively using this. Give that a second. Okay, so 8,361 contacts in BombBomb. Bomb. I've sent 1,200. I have 1,240 videos in there. I've sent 1,414 emails with 37,642 opens and 3,471 plays. Okay, I'm actively using it. Now, on the tracking side of it, I know that when I send, it, when I send an email, I know who opened it. I know who clicked on anything, and I know who played it. Let me go in here and just show you the back end. You know, for those of you who are, you know, if I'm sending a message to all of my database, let's say it's 800 or 5,000 people with a message about COVID-19 and an update, I want to know who's more engaged. So if they click on something or they play it, I could then follow up with a more personalized video and say, hey, Joe, you know, thanks, thanks for clicking on the email. If you have any other questions about COVID-19 and the mortgage process or what's going on with that, you know, I'd be happy to talk to you. Just call, text, email, smoke signal. We're here for you. Okay, see so yeah, that's 
it's I can personal it's generalized to begin with, but then I personalize it as I know people are uh, more dialed in. So let me just show you this. I sent this email. I'm going to track it so you guys can see what it looks like. All right, so I sent 4,964 emails here. Out of those 4,964, 29% of those were opened. And it gives you a ranking, good to great. Out of those that opened it, 9%, which is 131 people actually played the video. And out of those that played it, um, well, those that opened the, the email, 204 clicked the link that was in the email. This was for a webinar that I did, right? So 204 clicks out of 1,415 opens. That's a 14% click rate, which it says it's great as, you know, compared to the industry average and, and BombBomb's average. Um, you can see here, it then allows me, Jessica Hennig, um, she clicked it four times, she played the video once. You know, you'll know who to follow up with. I could then click on here and go, and do it right in here and just do a video to Realtor Palmer. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna send them a weird video that they're not expecting. However, I have all these templates already done. So initially, you guys have a lot of time right now. Think of all the video communications you could create for your clients. All the FAQs, what to expect during, during the, the buying process, the selling process, how do virtual showings work. You know, all of that that we have to do you know, to explain to our clients. The final walkthrough, okay? Here's a, a template. What to not overlook on a final walkthrough in this video. Just tell them, I'll play it for you. I walk through. I won't forget them, but at least I'm Hello, this is Jeremiah, it's Jay Manor with the Mineral Team at Remax Realty Group, and we are almost to the closing. Our last and final step is the final walkthrough. We're gonna to wanna to do this 48 hours prior to closing if we can. And here are some things to not overlook on the final walkthrough. I okay, again, they've never done a final walkthrough. Maybe they're first time home buyers. Maybe they haven't bought a home in five to seven years. What to not overlook. I have it all there. Repairs, all items, screen. It's not a reinspection of the house, right? They're not going in, kicking tires again. It's just a final walkthrough. This is what we do. So that's what I tell them in there. And then I also have a closing checklist as well. And I'm going to give you this template, but it's going to be drastically different for you, but you could just kind of say, okay, stop service or transfer the following electric, gas, water, phone, cable, internet, newspaper, garbage, laundry, all that stuff. Okay. I just have a list for them. People love checklists, especially if you're not going to be there, you have to add value because sometimes people feel that if you're not there, you're not really working. I'm going to be there virtually every single time. Okay. Go back over here. I do see we have some people in the chat. I'll see what you're saying here in a moment. As I go back to PowerPoint. Okay, let me look at the chat. Amy, your hand has been up for a while. We're gonna be opening for questions here in a moment. Uh, Kenny, yes, we're sending the keywords to the J-Man Speaks page as a message. Um, if you missed in the beginning, my messenger bot has been deactivated temporarily, but we'll get that we'll get that uh, we'll get that going within 24 hours. So you won't receive it immediately, but you'll receive it within 24 hours. Uh, and then I'm going to address the rest of the questions here in just a moment. Okay, because we're almost through the presentation here. Just got to get rid of the video button here. All right, we did the field trip. Last thing is equipment. Um, a lot of you are wondering what kind of equipment should you get? Um, you know, for your smartphone, you just need the smartphone. Mine disappears in my virtual background. Okay, you just need the smartphone. Um, if you don't have a model within the last couple of models, like I have a uh, Samsung, I almost said iPhone. I have a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. I would say S9 or newer is what you need to have just because they have changed the lenses. Uh, there's five different lenses on the new iPhone and, the, and on the new Samsung. It's worth the upgrade. Okay, but then I also have a list of the additional stuff that you should have. You know, most of you have your video on. That's your integrated laptop camera. I also have a backup camera here that's included in the list in the case something happened with my computer. I can't have a lapse in service. I can't have, I can't not have the ability to do video. So two is one and one is none. Make sure you have redundancy in place. And then uh, two other things that are very important. I'm gonna show you here in a second. 
lighting, right? Here's my lights on, lights off. Lights on, lights off. Okay, that makes a big difference. And then also your sound. If the microphone stinks on your, on your laptop computer, then getting something like this, these are the AirPods, right? They go in your ear like that. That is actually a wireless microphone. So when I do longer classes and I stand further back, I'm further back from my computer, I would use the AirPods uh, to be sure that people can hear me. So what's next? You can go to jmanseminars.com. We have additional training. We actually have the next, next level virtual agent training will be next Friday. You can go on there and sign up for that. Uh, but we do have additional training options as well. But just follow our page, uh, facebook.com slash jmanspeaks, as well as our YouTube channel. We post a lot of free content on there to help you be better, do better with video, with technology, uh, and, and your social media. So here's the, for those of you who didn't scan the link in the beginning, this is your spot to scan it, take your phone out, QR, QR code scanner, and that'll take you to, the, to our messenger bot. And I want to end with this. Your hardest times often lead to the greatest moments of your life. Keep going. Tough situations build strong people in the end right? See this as an opportunity to take your business to, to the next level, right? Challenging times create opportunity. There's, there's agents in your market right now who are sitting at home doing nothing. You took it upon yourself to step on this webinar and take your business to the next level. So celebrate that. I'm happy to help you in any time. Be better, do better, and take, take care of your clients. Now we're going to open up for any questions and I'm going to come over here and look at the chat. Stop sharing this.